I honestly like I get to do what I like to do every day. I'm building my life to basically hang out with my friends and talk to my friends and talk to the people I love every day. Um, which that's awesome. And it's like we're talking business too. Right. You know? It's not like we're just catching up. Like we're talking like, yo, what deals do you got in the pipe right now? Anything I can work for you? And it goes, you know, both sides. And it's every day. So I'm literally building my life awesome. to hang out and talk to my best friends every day and the people I love every day. Welcome to another episode of the Wholesale Elite Podcast. I am Aisham Hipshire, and I'm joined by my dude, Mr. Tanner Santucci. What up, bro? What's up? What's up? What's up? I thought you were going to say I choked there as I was like talking. <laughs> <laughs> Just got down that line. Bro, I thought you were going to be like, what up, my... I was like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> no, <I don't>. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> man. Okay, I'm pretty stoked for today. Um, the, 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 the guests for today, our guests, our esteemed colleague and gentleman, Mr. Matt Justice. Matthew, what's up, dude? What's up, man? Thank you guys for having me here. Absolutely, bro. I mean, thank you for coming on. I've been, I don't know what I've been thinking or doing or whatever, but I've been wanting you to be on this show for probably the last five months. Yeah, and man, I was just waiting for the invite. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we connected over the weekend, man. Now, now you know, we're, we're, we're here and we get to dive into that brain of yours. And one, it's funny because Matt, I, I, I told him something and I really meant it the other night. I, I watch how people move. I pay attention to a lot of stuff and Matt moves with the swag of a millionaire, like, like his, his whole ambiance, his approach, his air, not just his look or anything, but just the way he moves. He, he moves as someone with intention, with purpose, with heart, and you can tell why he's so successful. Um, and so, man, I can't wait to really dig into your story, dude, because I've seen the success that you've had, you know, we're part of the same real estate coaching community, Astro Flipping, shout out Jamil Damji. Um, but I've seen the success he's having. I just don't know the story behind it. And so, man, I'm, I'm really super stoked to dig into you. But how's your day going, bro? Dude, it's been busy, honestly. Just walked a couple properties. Thought I was going to get attacked by a homeless person. But yeah, there were many nice. homeless people there. But <laughs> yeah, I was surprised that there wasn't any squatters at this one. Um, were you thinking there were going to be? Yeah, man. Like, oh, well, I walked into the backyard because, like, you had to go through the backyard to get the key, basically. And they had, like, this, like, igloo almost in, like, concrete. And I'm looking at it, and it's, like, a fireplace. And then I walk to the other side, and there's, like, a towel draped over it. And I'm like, man, oh, no. there's, you're a homeless person in here. I'm not oh, like no. <laughs> Well, wow. good. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that you're safe and uh, and and you're joining us today. So that, that's good. <laughs> Well, dude, let, let's crack this baby open. Um, I, you know, we, we, we like to start with, with the, you know, the origin story, um, but, you know, not just kind of glance over it, really dig into it. Cause I, I truly believe that a person's past is kind of what creates their present. Um, and it's good to know the story behind the story. You know, you can see the success, um, but once you start, you know, putting together the pieces of all the different stories, you start to realize that I'm no different. You know, yes, I may be different from this one person, Matt Justice, but I may not have been different from the last story that we listened to. So everyone's got different stories and different upbringings, but it's those decisions that you make in that, you know, upbringing that, that bring you to this point. So let's go back to your origin story, bro. Like, where, where are you from? What was life like growing up? So I'm from a town outside of L.A. called Santa Clarita. Um, and so... It's where Six Flags Magic Mountain is. Um, okay. Here. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was a, it's a good city. I mean, it's really safe. Um, you know, honestly, man, like I, I didn't have a hard upbringing at all. I, my parents, I'm very grateful for them. They provided me so much. Um, I, I wasn't without as a child, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I grew up there, went to high school out there, and then came to college out here. I played basketball all throughout high school. Um, and yeah, that's kind of uh, all, honestly, like all I did growing up was play basketball. That was my passion. That was my love while I was a kid. What did your parents do for a living? My dad, uh, he was a captain of LAPD um, and then retired and became a chief of police for Ventura Community College District. Um, so he was a, a cop or like the chief of police for 
a community college. Uh, he was about four of them, I think, were in that district. So he was the chief of police for all four colleges. And then my mom has always kind of had the entrepreneur spirit. Like she did Mary Kay and a couple other like multi-level marketing businesses and stuff like right. that. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, now, what about siblings? I'm actually an only child. Okay. Okay. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so your your dad was doing his thing as as a as an officer, um, and then your mom was was doing her thing, uh, slinging that Mary Kay. Did yeah. she uh, Did she ever get the pink Cadillac? She did. She, she did. Had okay. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Well, well, now we've got something to dig into a little bit because I, you know, that's not easy. It is no. not easy. There's, there's a lot of people selling Mary Kay. Mary Kay has been around for a long time, which is good. Um, but to be able to build that level of a team um, is crazy impressive. So did this have any sort of an impact on you at all looking back? I mean, you know, I think it, it does. Cause I mean, when, when I was a child, like I would go with her to all of her meetings, um, when she would even go and drop off all of the products and stuff, like she would take me with her. Um, I would do inventory and stuff with her and I would just kind of help her out all the way up until I was probably about like maybe 12, 13 years old. And that's when I really started like diving into basketball and basically doing that all day. So I didn't really have time for, you know, much other stuff, but I, I see. Think definitely did. I see. That's awesome. Well, okay. So uh, after high school, you said uh, you went to college and you said here and you were in Arizona, correct? Yeah. The flag right here. I went to University of Arizona. The Wildcats Arizona. looks like. <laughs> Dude, yeah. how, uh, how'd you end up in Arizona from California? You could have gone to school anywhere. Why, why there? Honestly, it's kind of a crazy story. So I wanted to play basketball going into college. Um, and I didn't really apply to any schools outside of basketball. And a lot of like division three colleges wanted me to come and play for them. But a lot of them were very, um, they were really good academically. And so you had to have high GPAs, get SAT scores and stuff. And I'm not a good test taker and I didn't have that good of a GPA. Um, so classic entrepreneur, yeah, by the way. Like, right. classic. So <laughs> a lot of these places, they didn't, they didn't accept me. And so the way it works, you know, division three basketball schools or division three schools is you have to get into the school first before you actually could be on the team. Um, and so I had coaches that wanted me to play, but I just didn't get into the school. And so I only applied to one college outside of basketball and I got accepted there and it, I didn't decide until maybe a week before I graduated high school. And I was like, all right, fine. Like, I'm just not going to play basketball. And then I'm going to go to this school and, you know, see what it's like. And so I went to that school and it was a really small Christian private school. Like it was probably the size of my high school, if not smaller. Oh, wow. And so I'm like, man, if I'm going to college, like I may as well live the most out of it, you know? Sure. And I'm like, I'm, I was doing more stuff at high school and like, I would go walk around at nine o'clock at night and, no one would be walking around. I'm trying to socialize with people and there's no one out. Like I could count on my hand how many people <laughs> like were able to socialize. And so I would FaceTime my buddy. Uh, he was like one of my best friends at the time. And he was going here to University of Arizona. And I would FaceTime him all the time and he's having a good time. And I'm like, man, this sucks. Like I'm just sitting in bed on a Saturday night. Like, so I'm like, man, I'm transferring right away. I came to visit him. And I'm like, I love this school. I'm coming here next semester. And then I just transferred literally right away. Ah, okay. Okay. And you did, you did all four years there. And, and so I technically did three and a half here. My parents were like, if you do more than four years of college, then you got to pay for it. And so I had, I already wasted a semester at a different school. So I, I, I see had up here. Yeah. I see. All right. Well, what came after uh, college? Bro, I probably took about two, three months just to kind of figure out what I wanted to do um, and then hopped right into real estate. Really? How, okay. So let's talk about that. How did, how did you learn about real estate? Why, why real estate? Um, so growing up, my parents read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, uh. And uh, they would tell me, you know, make your money work for yourself you know, buy rental properties and all this and that. 
And they, so, did they own real estate? They've always owned a couple properties. Um, nothing like super scalable and where they could go and like quit their job though. Um, okay. But yeah, they've always owned a couple. And Some so they're, yeah, they, yeah, they have, I think right now they have a little more and especially since I got into real estate, they got sure. more into real estate and like they started wanting to fix and flip and stuff like awesome. that. So yeah, super cool. Um, but yeah, they, they've always had a couple and they're like, you should get into real estate. Like when I'm just, you know, like out of college trying to figure out what I want to do, they're like, get your real estate license. Like, I don't want to do that. And, um, so I'm like, okay, well, I know I need to get into real estate at some point, like buy rental properties, but how do I do that if I don't have any money? Right. And so I'm looking up on Google, like how to get rich so I could go and buy rental property. And man, like everything was real estate, real estate, real estate. And I'm like, okay, well, you know what? Screw it. Like, how do I get into real estate now? Like, let's just cut this. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, but I don't want to be a real estate agent. Like it just, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. And then started coming across wholesaling. And so a lot of the stuff I was reading on wholesaling was like, go drive in for dollars. And so I uh, would literally just go and DoorDash and just take down properties, drive in for dollars. And um, man, then I, I would look up when I was just driving around, I looked up like wholesale podcasts, right? And wholesale hotline came up. And so then that's kind of how I found Jamil and got into Astro flipping. Ah, okay. Now, when you got into coaching, had you done any deals at that point? No. So okay. I started calling sellers for probably about like two weeks from my driving for dollars list. I'm like, man, this is not for me. I know there's a <laughs> different way. And, um, then I, I heard Jamil talk a little bit about his story and I'm like, man, I just really, I was like, you know, there's either a different way or I'm not doing this right. And I just need help. And so I heard Jamil talk about his story and I really resonated with him and I'm like, I need to get close to that guy. And so that's when I decided to join Astro. Now the investment into Astro isn't cheap. You know, once you get in and you realize what you get, it's, I, I cannot believe it is not more than a hundred thousand dollars. You know, I really can't, the amount of value, uh, I mean, that community has made, made Tanner and I millionaires for sure. And yeah. you as well. Um, and so the investment is so no nominal, but it's still a decent amount. Um, how did you justify that when you were getting started? I knew, man, I was like, I just got to get my first deal. Like, I just know, like I got, I'll be able to make it back, you know? And I just, I had that faith and I knew I would get my first mm -hmm. deal pretty soon. And I mean, I think that's really, you know, all it was is I just had that faith that I knew I would be able to be successful and, and be able to do a deal pretty quickly to pay it back. Man. Oh, there's a weird thing answer. going on here, Aisham. Have you noticed yeah. the last couple episodes? Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> what is that theme, Tanner? Don't leave people in the dark. Yeah. Well, the theme is just having the right mindset, um, which is why we started this show to begin with. Um, but also, like Matt was saying, you know, he just had belief. Uh, he didn't have to know everything, but he believed in himself. And sure enough, he did a deal quickly. Um, how, how long did it take you to get that deal done? Mm, I think it closed. So I joined in September, closed my first deal, I think November 1st. So it took Perfect. me about two months. Perfect. Um, and then the thing is, so I actually, my parents wanted to get into fixing and flipping. And so I ended up selling them my first deal. And so that's how I did my first deal, basically. My second deal I did in December, at the same time of doing that deal, um, I decided that, or me and my parents both decided like, hey, let's just partner on these fix and flips instead of right. me trying to sell them to you. Um, and so we decided to do that. So took down another one. And then from December till about mid April, I did zero deals because I was doing project management and, um, you know, trying to fix and flip. Sure. Sure. Mm. Wow. Okay. Well, let me ask. Okay. So you, you did your first deal in November, you know, and you had the confidence going into the same thing I had, you know, and I think it's the same thing that most people that lock up their deal pretty quickly, 
you know, in, in the very beginning is you just have the certainty that you're going to get it done. You're not thinking timeline or anything. You're just thinking the work and you're just doing the work and you're making sure you're following the steps and you're getting coaching and, and guidance and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, a deal's done. You're not so focused on that deal. I've got to get my first deal. Those people that focus on that are always focusing on that. You're always focusing right. on, man, I got to get my first deal. I got to get my first deal. It's like, no, no, no. You're thinking about the wrong thing. And so what, after you got that first deal, um, I'm going to make an assumption um, in my question, but what are some of the doubts that you faced along the way? Um, so, I mean, for me too, it was not, can I do my first deal? Or can I do more deals? I actually was like, man, I just sold my parents this house. I'm praying it's a good deal, you know? And that was, and, and it being my first deal, I'm like, man, like, I don't want to screw this up and now, you know, screw my parents over either. Um, so that was a big worry of mine. Sure. Um, but I mean, after it, it, honestly, it also gave me confidence at the same time, you know, because I saw the property um, and I mean, we still own it to this day. And I honestly think it's a property that we should probably never sell just because nice. it's in a terrific location. And I mean, you know, over 10 to 15, 20 years, it's going to be a multi, multi million dollar property. So your first deal, your parents were your buyers. Yeah. I think so I cool. missed that in the story. Yeah, that's phenomenal. That's so wow. Cool. <laughs> okay. So, so, you know, mom and dad bought your first deal. What about your second deal? How, how did that come about? Um, my second deal, I was just the entire time I would honestly, all my first three deals, I don't think I picked up the phone once. So mm. I was just texting and just messaging people on Facebook, honestly, because I was, I was nervous and I was scared. sure, but I found wholesalers that had deals. And so I would just text them asking about them and stuff. And then that's how my second deal came about connected with the wholesaler. Uh, he had one. Um, and the time before I canceled the property in that location where not a lot of buyers are either. And, but since I had a property there and I canceled it, I had a couple buyers that were there from canceling that deal. And right. so just sold it to them right away. And it was honestly a really simple one. Man. Okay. So, and so at this point, are you thinking, man, like I can really grow and kind of scale this thing. Or are you still kind of just chasing the deal and, and, and looking to kind of learn the business? Where are you at at this point in your business? I'm like, man, I'm freaking, I'm doing this thing. Like right. we're under construction now on a property. I'm project managing it. You know, we bought another one. Um, and then I just did two deals and I'm like, this is freaking awesome. Like, let's go. This is also going to provide me more deals as I thought. And then ended up not doing another deal for almost like four months, which mm. is crazy. Mm. What did you learn in those four months that you, uh, that you got no deal flow? Just stay consistent. I mean, and I've always been the person that's like really hard on myself. And <clears throat> even to this day, that honestly hasn't really gone away, you know, um, but staying consistent and I was really hard on myself. So learning to also give myself some grace um, and, and realistically, I mean, that was all it is. And just still having that faith, you know, because I'm like, I know I can still make this work. You know, but I was also using other excuses like I'm under construction, you know, I'm doing something else. I, but like, and it's like I go and look at people now that are really successful in this business and they can do both. So it's like, okay, that's not really what it was. So I was, it, I was personally in a different mindset of being able to do deals while under construction, you know? Right. Yeah. There's, there's something I want to point out here. And I remember, um, I can't remember who said it, but, um, and I use this, like, it's like a mental thing. Right. And so you were, had quick success, you, you know, project management, you're doing a flip and you had got a few deals done and then dry for four months. And you just pointed out something where you said you were making excuses. Oh, I'm too busy. Oh, I'm too busy to do this or too busy to do that or whatever it is. Right. I've had this stuff going on. Well, the universe heard that and said, Nope, you, you want to act that way. We'll, we'll draw your pipeline. So you can not become so busy when you're ready. Merry Christmas. You'll get more deals. And I've been, I forgot who said that it was someone in Astro, but they said that. And it just hit me like a 
bag of pillows or something. I, I don't fucking know. But it just hit me hard, right? Um, and so that's something I want the, the audience and the listeners to, to think about. Whenever you're complaining that it feels overwhelming, you feel like you're there's so much going on in life, whether it's in your business, whether it's personal life, like just keep telling yourself, be thankful for every moment that happens to that because the universe will get back and will keep that growing. Every time I find myself, and I don't mean to go on a spiel, but every time I find myself like complaining, right? Like I feel so overwhelmed. Something happens where it slows it down. And then I'm like, when it slows it down, I get like upset. I'm like, why did it slow down? I'm like, I want that again. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, I just wanted to point that out for the audience. If, if you feel overwhelmed, be thankful for it. So the universe will keep giving back. Hundred yeah. percent. Be, be careful what you wish for. Dude. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> right. So Matt, um, you know, at, at this point, you're you seem to be riding high, and I'm sure there are some, I'm sure there's some challenging moments along the way. Um, well, I, I should say this at this point, right now, you know, you, you're you're doing well. Um, what? And and I'm going to say this. I'm going to caveat by saying this. You know, we all know that the word failure. Um, or not the word failure, but we all know that failure is not really failure unless you quit, right? Like the failure is you have got to change the lens to look at it as a lesson. It's really all it was. So, but without, you know, for lack of better words, what are, what can you think of a failure that's happened to you in your real estate business that you actually treasure the most? Dude, I, uh, my, so before I sold that deal to my parents, um, market was hot this is also in 2021 um just at the end of 2021 so market was on fire especially here in arizona and i'm thinking like i'm hearing people on youtube like oh you can basically just get anything under contract and you can sell it you know and so i'm like all right and someone sends me a property a wholesaler i didn't know what i was doing either i didn't know how to be like hey can i shop this out for you because i also wasn't i was maybe a week to two weeks into the course of astro so i didn't get to like all of micro flipping and all the actual strategies of how to go and protect yourself right and so um i'm like oh yeah like i'll take this deal and they're like, all right, perfect. So they send me the assignment. I went down, put 5K non-refundable earnest money on it. And um, I try shopping it out. And everyone's like, I don't want this thing. Like, it's way too high. I don't want it. I don't want it. And then I go and see it because I'm also like, all right, I got into real estate to be a buyer. You know, maybe this is, I need to actually be a buyer. And so I go and see it and like cracked foundation and all this and that. And I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> I'm going to lose my ass if I buy this thing. And so I, I had to cancel it. And so I lost $5,000 on my very first contract. Mm. Mm. What did you, uh, what, what do you think you, you learned from that, that, that failure that, that, which would make it why, you know, why you treasure it the most? I mean, you know, there definitely more communication skills and being more curious about the process and also be more curious about the property, you know, mm. um, and just ask better questions. Right. Cause I didn't know what I was doing. So I'm like, Oh yeah. Like send me the, the assignment. Like that's cool. But it's like, I didn't even know why I'm getting the assignment. I just wanted sure. to stop it out, you know, where as if I could have just been like, Hey, can I send you an option agreement? And like, I would have put no money down either. It's like, hey, why am I putting the 5K non-refundable down? Shouldn't a buyer be doing that? Right. You know? Um. So the overall, had no clue. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. And so I, I literally had no idea, and I didn't ask any questions about it either. So that was huge. Also, if I am gonna put down non-refundable earnest money, I'm totally for it. Like to this day, like I've done it on multiple properties, and I've been very successful doing that. But if I'm going to do it, I either have to know like in my gut that it is a good deal or I have to go see it. And mm. also like that was my first property that I really even like comped and looked at. So it's like, how did I even know that that was that good of a deal for me to put non-refundable money on it? You know? Right. Right. I love that story. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just thinking, man, I don't think at any time in my, when we were doing single family, that we that I would have been comfortable enough to put down uh, non refundable, and so uh, I guess the lesson there is sometimes you just got to roll the dice, right? 
Yeah. And I'm listening to all these people and people are like, just shoot your shots. Like just get anything under contract. It'll sell. It'll sell. And so I do, I'm shooting my shot and you know, you got to learn. Right. Right. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, dude, I've heard, you know, like I said, you know, being in the community for a little over a year now, I've, I've heard a lot of stories, a lot of crazy stories too. And you have some of the most, you know, whenever someone comes on, you can tell when people are doing business because they have some of the most craziest stories. Yep. They do. You know, the people that aren't doing that many, they'll come on with like, you know, a little, hey, I've got a problem, but your problems are like next level problems. So <laughs> yeah, they like, are. How have you learned to deal with disappointment in business? Um, that's a really good question. I guess it really depends on I honestly I I'm not really disappointed, you know, because at the end of the day everything is reliant on me and my choices and my decisions. Mm -hmm. And I know that regardless, whatever happens, you know, God is making that happen for me. Um, And it's just, it's just part of the journey, part of my path. And yeah, granted, you know, some stuff may suck, but how can I make it not suck as bad? (laughs) I see. That's all I see. So you just, you take ownership of it. You're I'm a victim, not a victor. Let's go. Let's figure this thing out. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've definitely had some crazy things happen to me. Um, And every single time, you know, I've definitely lost, but I've had scenarios where I come out on top or I figure something out. And overall, even the losses to me, I've learned. So it's, I haven't really been too disappointed. The only thing I could say is that I'm disappointed sometimes in myself if I don't push myself to that level of where I know I can be performing at, you know, that's really the only disappointment I think I've, I've really ever had because everything else is just a learning lesson. I, I've, I'm finding also another interest or another similarity Tanner, and, and you may have picked up on this. Um, but it seems like people that have a background in sports, um, can really push through adversity really easily. Would you w- would you say that your sports background really helped there, or is it just oh, life man. or what? Dude, you have no idea. Actually, like, oh, sports was, is the reason why I am the way I am. Like, I, I, my, I always wanted to play basketball and, and be on varsity and be team captain and all this and that, right? I've been playing basketball since I was like two years old, four years old competitively. Um, I go and try out for my freshman team and they don't pick me to make the team freshman year. So that like crushed me and I'm like bawling my eyes out debating if I should quit. And then I'm like, man, like I'm just going to go play football and still train on the side. And so I still, I played football, was still training for basketball. And like, even then, you know, people still telling me that I will never make the team and all this and that. And then the next year I go and make the team and I never played and people still telling me I'll never play. And then after that, people telling me I'll never make varsity. Then after that, you know, going and making varsity and people telling me I'll never do anything else. And then after that year going and being team captain and it's like, but the, that didn't just, happen obviously overnight i had a lot of people like giving me shit but i the where i became successful even in that is all the work behind the scenes like i was training eight hours a day on top of school and like on top of weightlifting and then on top of practice like i was so dialed in like when i first like when we first started like i said i played basketball all the time like i literally mean i ate ate slept and drank basketball. That was all I did. And so then I get into college and I'm not doing anything. And I actually was kind of depressed for a bit because I'm like, I'm not really doing much. Right. Got back into real estate. I, the first thing I said to my mom was, I feel like I'm playing basketball again. Like this just reminds oh, wow. me. Of my mind. And it's something that I, I just, I love. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I freaking love this stuff. Like, it is so fun to me to be able to have such a big goal and want to accomplish it so bad that I will almost do anything that I can to get there, you know? Have you always been a big thinker? Or did this come appear later on in life? Um, 
I, I would be, yeah, I would say so. I mean, man, I'm only, I'm 5'11 and, and white, and I wanted to play in the NBA when I was like, <laughs> well, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, I've definitely been a big thinker. <laughs> wow. Um, because, you know, you said a couple of things. You, you'd mentioned that, you know, when you, when you join, uh, when you start playing basketball, you know, you wanted to be in varsity, you wanted to be team captain. Um, I, I don't know if there are people that start playing sports who want to, you know, just be the best. Like they just like, they want to be accepted first. You know, they're like, God, I hope I make the team. You're like, God, I hope they pick me as team captain. Um, why, why were those elite levels so important to you? Um, you know, even now too, I think all the elite levels for me are just status. Mm. You know, I just want that status. And I feel like for my work ethic, I I want that so bad to also be accepted, like you just said, mm. you know. But for me, average is an acceptance, mm. you know. I have to go over and beyond what that standard is for me to even feel that acceptance. And, I see. You know, and so I think that's really what it is and why I've always wanted those things. Because literally everything, like, I'm so competitive. You know, I want to like, sometimes I don't show it, but in my mind, I'm like, frick, I wish I won or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. I, it, I think that's really what it is. I see. I, um, I, I'm going to transition just a little bit. Uh, cause I, I'm curious to know more of your habits now that I have a better frame of who you are. Um, are you a, are you a morning routine kind of guy or do you like consistency in the morning or do you just wake up and hit the phones? What, what's, what's the beginning of your day look like, dude? Oh man. Yeah. I'm definitely a morning routine person. Um, and I used to not be, but I, uh, if you want me to really, do you want me to like really Please, dive in? Bro, I love this stuff. Okay. Yeah. So I wake up at four 30 every day. Um, Ouch. and I, for, well now since we're in Arizona, I might stop doing this, but first I would take a cold shower. Um, basically, as soon as I wake up, now the water is freaking hot. Like the pipes here are just hot. So like, Impossible to take a cold shower there. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, why am I even doing this? I'm not even getting what I want out of it anymore. Um, so I've been pondering stopping that for the last couple of weeks because the water is just warm now. I'm like, it's not even light. Like it's cold. putting me back to sleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, so I'll do that. And then, um, basically right, right after that, I'm at the gym at 5.00 AM. Um, and then I, I get home around 6.30 ish, 6.45 and then pray and meditate, read the Bible, read a book, um, breakfast. And then most of the time I have a meeting, uh, like three days a week around 8.30 and then I'm hitting the phones around 9.30 ish, depending on what else I have in the morning. If if you if you could only pick one of those in the morning that you absolutely had to do which one would it be <laughs> i mean i i honestly i couldn't pick one i just have to i i need <laughs> two i need at least two and that would be pray and gym like those mm. are the two things that i have to do especially in the morning um cuz like if i don't gym in the morning i won't do it the rest of the day like I'm not a, I don't like gymming at night. I also like to take pre-workout and stuff like that. Like I'm not going to take that at night, you know, and then I have to eat spiritually for mm. before I go and do anything else. Why is the gym so important? Man, that's something I feel like I've been gymming for probably about six, seven years. And I think exercise is something that every single person needs, you know, whether it is gymming, running, walking, you know, whatever it is, right? Exercise is something that your body needs. Um, and for me, it's just always been something to kind of get my mind right and set me up for the day. You know, I'm going in and I'm overcoming so much already just going to the gym, you know, and it's hard sometimes to get myself even there. And that's already a win, you know? Right. And then it's like, then now I'm like, okay, let's hit, you know, 10 reps or whatever, right? And then I hit 11, 12 and I'm like, damn. I just freaking crushed it again. So it's just already building even more self-confidence. I see. So you're stacking wins right out the gate in the, in the beginning of the day, which, which translates on throughout the day. Yes. That's phenomenal. Um, okay. Man, dude, you, 
you're, I mean, you're an optimistic guy, right? Like you seem to have a pretty positive outlook. Um, is that something instilled by your parents or, or what? Cause I mean, I guess only child, you know, there's the whole only child syndrome where everyone thinks that, that you know, only children are, are spoiled and whatnot. Yeah. Were, were your parents, you know what I mean? Like, were they always like, dude, it's going to be okay, Matt, like you got this and whatnot. Or was that something you had to work on? I know you said you were hard um, on yourself, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've been hard on myself because I always have very high expectations for myself and sometimes they're too high you know, and, um, that's why I'm, I'm hard on myself. Um, but I've definitely think I've always been a positive person and had a very optimistic, um, perspective on life. And my parents definitely were like, Hey, you know, whatever you want to do, it's totally possible. You know, you just got to put your mm -hmm. mind to it. Um, that's awesome. and like, even with basketball, they're like, Hey, if you, cause I didn't make the team, they're like, you can still make the team next year if you want to. They were very supportive of me in whatever I was deciding to do. So I definitely think that comes from having such good support from when I was younger. That's incredible. Um, what, what's one, what's one of the, uh, what's one of the, the great, I, I hate to ask this because <laughs> I, <laughs> I really do. Well, you know, what? I'll ask it this way. What has, because I, I, I know that you're, you've been doing this for a while and you make a decent amount of money. Um, I was going to ask you what's one of the greatest lessons you've learned, but I, I don't want to ask that. I want to ask what freedoms has real estate afforded you? Hmm. I mean, I honestly, like I get to do what I like to do every day. I'm building my life to basically hang out with my friends and talk to my friends and talk to the people I love every day um which that's awesome and it's like we're talking business too right you know? it's not like we're just catching up like we're talking like yo what deals do you got in the pipe right now anything i can work for you and it goes you know both sides and it's every day so i'm literally building my life awesome. to hang out and talk to my best friends every day and the people i love every day um well well then what's a what's a challenge that you're currently facing right now in your business I think, um, really I need, I'm trying to figure out how to scale. And I think it's also like a, a mental thing too, where I'm like, Oh, like I could just put so many people in place, but I'm like, no, like, don't do that. Like I want to do it slowly. I don't want to scale too big, too fast and not be able to handle it. But it's also like, I know I have the knowledge and help, right? Like we have so much support in Astro and so many other people doing such big things that I know I could go and get the help, but I'm like, man, why haven't I, you know, kind of figured this I out see. already? Um, so I think it's, it's realistically scaling and the mindset around that too. Cause I also am like the type of person where I feel like I need to be in the day to day. Right. I need to be working every single day and making all the calls and doing all this and that. So I don't know, man, I think that's definitely what I'm, like <laughs> what's trouble got you right now. Yeah. got you um it, what is uh, as far as you know if, if you know that that is you know your, your challenge to get you to that next level in your business uh what's your plan in terms of uh, how you're going to attack that or, or approach that um so right now i have first let's just go over kind of what i have okay so right now i have one ac rep he helps me out with agent outreach and mls offers then I have a transaction coordinator um, who obviously for you, you guys know, but for maybe people in the audience, she basically goes and handles all paperwork and talks to title every day um, for all the properties that we have in escrow, gets MD in from buyers, stuff like that. Then I also have a VA who pulls, I, I, I'm about to hire another one, but this one pulls data for me. Um, so he goes and pulls now he goes and pulls uh, MLS um, pro properties listed on the MLS. I see. And then, yeah, but before he wasn't doing that, I actually just gave him that test today. Um, he was doing buyer intake, so going and finding buyers from tax records and other places. Um, and then he was he creates all my deal text. As soon as a deal gets in, he goes and takes all the pictures, puts it into our Dropbox link. He'll go and put all the information together so it looks pretty. And then he'll go and make an email blast and go and create an, an inventory. Like I do it all in one blast. I put my entire inventory on one. Um, so he goes and creates that for me. 
Um, and then now I'm about to hire another VA that will just be kind of like chilling in my Facebook and manage that for me. Uh, do a lot of my Facebook outreach and basically just managing all the replies and trying to push people over into my phone number so I can get more wholesalers uh, to do deals with. Dude, that's incredible. That's so you're ready to scale that. What What do you think you'd like to scale into? Like, what's the next thing you're wanting to add? So, and especially at this last weekend, you know, Jamil was like, envision your company and where you want it to be. And, you know, do you want like a Kegley or do you want something that's more lean? And so I honestly, this is also something I took away from this weekend was I thought I needed to have a Kegley. But mm. then Henry Washington went and talked and he's like, <laughs> I do acquisitions. I manage the projects. My wife manages our rental portfolio. And then I got a media manager and that's it. And I'm like, what the heck? This dude has over a hundred properties and he only has three people on his team. Like that's insane. <laughs> Making you know? money. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So, I'm so like, did okay. that inspire you? Yes. Heck yeah. I'm like, I don't need a big team. I do want to scale myself out of it, but I don't want you know, a hundred employees, at least for wholesaling, you know, maybe, maybe in another company in the future, but for wholesaling, I don't need it. You know, I I'll probably, uh, and I kind of got the vision of it this weekend at the mastermind. I'll probably want right around like three act managers. Uh, one will probably be just focusing on micro flipping to, uh, agents and MLS offers. And then I'll have a general manager to connect them kind of with the, with the dispo. And that'll probably be my entire team with my VAs and a transaction coordinator. And that'll probably be it, which that's really not a lot. Dude. Let's oh go. my gosh. Yeah. That had to have been a huge weight relief then, you know, to see that and be like, dude, I can still crush it. And I don't need to build a you know, massive <laughs> franchised out company. That's yeah. incredible. Dude. That's awesome. Well, dude, um, you know, kind of landing the plane here. So What's what's a word of inspiration that you've got for wholesalers that are out there right now that are you know they're they're in the pit and they're they're struggling a little bit. What would you tell them? Um, the one thing that I would have to say and that I've definitely experienced is overall just consistency. I kind of talked about it a little at the mastermind, um, but like you know, obviously you're gonna have pains and it it happens, but the more that you keep hitting that pain the more pain tolerance you'll have. So if you stay consistent and you keep going, the more pain you can endure throughout your journey. So, I mean, if you're only able to make three calls and that's intolerable for you, make those three calls. And then in a week, two weeks, you'll be able to get to five calls. You know, you'll be able to get to seven calls and it will start to increase each and every day. So overall, just consistency and doing what you really can do and continuously pushing yourself to do that. Consistency kills complacency. I love that, dude. Um, that that's that that's a perfect answer, Matt. My last question for you, bro. What would you say is your superpower? Hmm, that's a really good question. I think, um, honestly, leadership. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm a natural born leader. And I honestly didn't realize it until like a couple months ago, but a lot of people will come to me for advice um, to kind of follow and to look up to. And it's shown up in, in my life for almost everything. Like basketball was really the only thing where I did want to be team captain. And like that happened because I worked so hard and I was leading by example. But then like when I was in college and I was in a fraternity, um, they wanted me to be the leader basically of the pledges and to be able to get them to get initiated into the fraternity. And I did not want to do that. I'm like, man, I do not want to leave, <laughs> you know, right. but I got pushed into that. And like, in my opinion, it probably had one of the best pledge classes, you know? And then it's like, now it's, I, I'm having to show that I can be a leader to my team. And like, I really think that that's my natural born gift, but it was something that I was um, almost afraid to step into. Wow. Mm. Wow. Leadership. You're, you're, you're a beast. Yeah, the leadership's huge. Oh. That's dope. 
I didn't think, I, I didn't expect that one, the superpower to be leadership. But now thinking through your story totally makes sense. Everything totally makes sense. Wow. That's and phenomenal. I, I'm not the type of person either to like just tell people what to do. Like I want to be the one leading by example. I want to be at the front lines, you know what I mean? And in charging with everyone. So I think that's also why I work so hard is because like, I do want to be the one in the trenches with everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Tanner, dude, do you got, do you got any questions or anything, anything in, in wraps for, for Matt before we uh, connect the world to him? No, dude, Matt, I think you're, I think you're dope, dude. I think uh, more people need to work with you. And uh, it's pretty cool that you're self-aware enough to, you know, realize that leadership is a strength. Um, Cause you know, a lot of people may not even realize that within themselves and they may not um, put that out there because they don't want right. to seem like they're boasting or they're egotistical. But right. I think some people are born um, with a trait to where they do attract um, people and they do, people do want to listen to you. People want to, you know, work for you and follow you and because you do everything right. Like you just said in basketball, you know, you became team captain because you led by example. Um, and that's what a real leader does. And I think that's what a great leader does. Um, and Absolutely. so, dude, you're a beast. Keep rocking. Um, and uh, where, where can people get in touch with you and what market are you in? And so people can reach out to you. So I'm in Arizona, um, but I can definitely help you connect the dots almost across the entire United States just because of the communities that we're in. Um, but my main market is definitely Arizona. Um, this is actually my Instagram handle oh, right here. Um, <laughs> this is 22. Um, so connect with me on Instagram. Um, and my Facebook is just my name, Matthew justice. Awesome. Okay. So on IG at Matthew justice 22 and Facebook, Matt justice. So dude, it's, it's been real. It's been fun. It has been real fun. Thank you so much, Matt, for, for coming on, pouring into the family, um, and, and giving us everything. Dude, that leadership bit at the end, I, I wish I would have started with that question. Cause now I want to dive in on that. <laughs> I, I love talking leadership. Um, and you know, it, it's obvious. It's so apparent, you know, um, if no one's following you, you're not a leader, you know, you've got plenty of people that follow you and look up to you and, 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 you know, want to work with you. And so that's, that's, that's incredible. And, you know, shout out to my partner, Tanner, another phenomenal leader. He's, you know, some people just have it. Some people just have it and people are gravitated to him. And, and I just hope and pray that those people are always good people. You know, I mean, I know you've got a heart of gold, dude. I learned that over this weekend. Um, and so, bro, shout out to you. Um, guys, work with Matt Justice. You want to get your deal sold? And it's funny you said that because I thought I was like, man, his market's Arizona, but I know you've done deals in other states and whatnot. Um, and so when you said that, I'm like, oh, okay, he's the plug. So, guys, <laughs> wherever you got deals at, man, like bring send him to Matt. Like he'll I he'll get it done. I'm telling you guys, like this guy closes deals. I see it all the time. So this is exciting. Matt, Appreciate thank you. you. Thank you so much for your time, man. I really we're we're all better for it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Guys, we want you in that seat. We want you right where, where Matt's at. So all you got to do is get out there, hustle, and make it happen. You know, connect with like-minded people. Stay in the zone. Keep coming back to this episode every week and pouring into your own mindset. Keep doing it. Keep working and grinding. And then we'll have you on the next episode of the Wholesale Eat Podcast. Until then, peace. peace. What up, Elite Fan? That's a wrap for today's episode. But look, if you got value out of the show today, do us a huge favor and give us a review or give us a like or subscribe. Do all the things to help us get the word out there. And look, we want to see you on the next show. So get out there and crush it, make it happen. Stay tuned for the next episode. Peace.